for jobs and to do it as easy as, and as seamless as possible. Uh, that's because we have hundreds of projects and it is really important to keep administrative tasks uh, as easy as possible. Uh, I have found that we script everything because it saves time, because it's more repeatable, and because seeing things written down really helps clarify processes and provides a framework for improving them. Uh, I have also found that we, we SSH in and out servers all the time for like diagnosis or deployments. Uh, sometimes we have to get custom information from databases. So SSH is a very important part of our lives. Uh, Fabric is a Python tool uh, that streamlines the use of SSH for systems administration. So instead of SSHing manually into computers, we can send our robot minions to do it. Uh, this is an example of how Fabric looks like. So you can run Fabric in multiple hosts, you know, different kinds of machines. Uh, tasks are simple Python functions, so they are easy to compose and we already know how to write them. Uh, it's easy to mix local uh, comments that work on our machine uh, with remote comments that are going to run on the remote machine. And you can leverage some sophisticated parts of SSH, like rsync, uh, through a very easy to use API. So for a quick introduction, you can install Fabric via pip, and then you start writing your tasks. Uh, the easiest way to do it is to uh, write all your tasks on a, on a file called fabfile.py, uh, and mark them as tasks with the task decorator. Uh, actually, behind the scenes, they have to be subclasses of task, but I have found that this function approach is easier to understand. And task decorator only wraps them in the uh, task superclass. And to run them, you use the fav command. Uh, it looks for a fav file.py in the current directory on it or in parent directories and runs the task hello. So very simple. Uh, by taking advantage of SSH, it can run on multiple hosts. So you can define a task and using the run function, you can run arbitrary comments on the other servers. Uh, and you can specify these are the hosts very easily. Here there's a common line flag and I can run it in my machine and remote machine. Uh, it runs them sequentially. Uh, sometimes configuration is more involved. You need like different users or things are located differently in different uh, servers. So we have the environment dictionary uh, where you can store uh, task configuration information and where you can share state between tasks. With this in mind, you can write tasks that only do configuration. So the development tasks configures the environment to use only development servers. And the production task configures the environment to use a production server. And if you run regular tasks after the configuration tasks, uh, they run on the environment configured by the first task. So you can do very involved configuration very easily in a simple Python function. Uh, we use Fabric for two things on my company. One is uh, for general scripting tasks, because it's easier than just plain Python. And the other is for remote interaction. Uh, for regular scripting tasks, an interesting case study we have is uh, we had a problem with a client that wanted to send gift cards to their customers, uh, but the sending failed because these gift cards were huge PDF files that they called an email on time uh, and will probably be above the sending limit. So they asked us to upload them to the server and provide users with a download link. Um, and of course, this download link should be at a random URL because the, we didn't want users to just knock around with the URL and get someone else's gift card. Uh, we took advantage of Fabric through environment configuration. It was very easy to 
run the task as a specific user in the server, uh, and we could easily configure globally where the final gift card PDF will be located. Um, and we could, uh, just by changing any of that cost, uh, I could run it locally on a development server, so I was sure that it was doing the right thing before running it in production. Uh, without having to mock around with uh, command line options that are prone to error. Uh, secondly, this is just Python, so we can leverage existing Python batteries like logging, uh, which Python provides really nifty logging facilities and it's easy to just mix them in our script. Uh, or CSV, uh, the Python CSV module is very easy to use, CVS, sorry, it's very easy to use and uh, yeah, you can leverage readily in your uh, administration scripts. Uh, and it, can, it lets us mix Python with system calls. So it is very easy to be writing your regular data processing script and just in the middle of it uh, doing system uh, calls. Uh, of course, this is not too difficult to do in pure Python. So where Fabric really shines is when you're interacting with remote hosts through SSH. Uh, one interesting case of this is the Vagrant machine. Vagrant is this tool for running uh, like virtual machines inside the machine to do your development in the virtual machine and to replicate the uh, environment in your server. But they are sometimes cumbersome to interact with because you have to run the com commands inside the virtual machine. And through Fabric, this is much more seamless uh, because it provides really good SSH integration so you can use uh, key files very easily. You do need to specify a password. Um, and that makes authentication much more simple and faster. So if you want to run a common task, like all the time when I'm developing Django, I need to sync DB and then to run south migrations. You can run them in just one step. And you can run them inside the Vagrant environment just by uh, using that simple command. So it makes interaction much more seamless. Uh, if you want to run just arbitrary commands, like a one-off thing, you can just, just you separate with the double dash and you can run any command on the host configure for fabric. So there I'm running them inside of the virtual machine and it's very, very easy. Um, it's very easy to compose tasks, too, because they are just simple Python functions. So here for resetting the DB, when I just want to bring everything down and back up, uh, what I have to do is I have to uh, drop down the database and create it again and run SyncDB and MigrateDB. And since I already have a... Uh, the task written for that, I can just call it normally like any other Python function. Uh, so I just run it and it, it, it takes care of uh, inter-process calling the, the different tasks. And this can be even more sophisticated. You, have, you can have tasks that are, uh, are like class-based and you can do like task inheritance, you can use uh, if you have a very extensive library of scripts, you can organize them using Python modules. So it is just uh, Python and that's very convenient. And it is so easy and so convenient that you can just do silly stuff. Like when I run tests, I like the feedback of having a colored output, like something red if something went wrong and green if it's, already, if it's everything okay. So Fabric provides a convenience function for outputting colors to the terminal and uh, checking the status, the return status of a process. So it is very simple, just uh, gonna with it. Um, now Fabric is sort of low level and there are lots of alternatives for it. Uh, if you are doing server configuration, 
like configuring users and setting something up from scratch, you're probably better off using something like Ansible for when you are more clear about what you want to do instead of how you want to do it. Uh, when you only need the build tool part of it, when you're just running local scripts, uh, there's a new tool called Invoke that is uh, based on Fabric and a little bit on Rake, Ruby Rake. Uh, it's still in beta, but it is quite cool and useful, and it's sort of like an evolution of Fabric for the uh, for the just local environment case. Um, you should check it out. And I think that will be all. Do you have any questions? So, uh, how do you get uh, your fabric scripts? Um, you can, they are um, just Python, so in principle you can use just unit test. Uh, I use mock for monkey patching the system calls. I'm not sure if there is something more convenient. Okay, uh, there should be some kind of system information, like a sub host name and the roles. Where do you store them? Um, like passwords? And no, just host, hosts, hosts and roles. Where do you store them? Hosting. Yeah. Um, I, sometimes if it's something really small, I just write it in the fab file. Uh, you can also use configuration files, like an RFC file. Uh, you can keep that out of version control and just specify the host list there. Um, and you can, of course, do something more uh, sophisticated, like using environment variables, because you can just use the standard library for that. If you, if if was fail my the, my deploy, I it can it can pass over I roll back this stuff. So so it it can define some conditional conditional script. Uh, yeah, so tasks are run sequentially, so it is easy to execute future steps based on the result of previous tasks, yes. Uh, and also when some task fails, like outside of your control, with the non-catch exception, uh, it just holds the whole, the whole thing down, so it doesn't blindly continue. Yeah, yes I did. I was just going to ask, is it difficult to port this to Python 3? I, I know it's one of the, f the few projects still left uh, on the wall to um, I, I'm wondering the same thing. Uh, I don't see anything that is particularly difficult, but I think the project is not as active as it used to be, so maybe that's the reason. Perhaps we could work on that on the sprints on Monday. <laughs> Thanks. Any other questions? Uh, I don't know, maybe because of Invoke, uh, this, this new tool that is kind of its spiritual successor, but I find that I really use the SSH features, so I think it's a shame if Fabric is going to be abandoned. Uh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I have only yeah, seen cursorly. Yeah. It looks like so for simple tasks, 
for script fabrics looks good for I know, uh, complex uh, server configuration looks like Ansible or Chef is a good one. But what when do you think well, I should move to from Fabric to you know, Chef or Ansible or you know what's a key indicator to okay I should move on? I think that more than complexity, or more than a complexity difference, it's more of a use case difference. Um, I, as a general rule, use Fabric for anything that I will have used shell because Python is much nicer than any shell script language. Um, but when I'm doing a strictly configuration, like, like not, not something actionable, but just I, I just want the server to look a certain way, that's when I turn to tools like Puppet or, or Ansible. Even when we are using Vagrant, uh, we have like half of the script is Puppet scripts and half of it is Fab uh, helpers. Uh, it sometimes gets messy. <laughs> but um, yeah, I think th that's just the line. Like if you are doing only configuration, you turn to a uh, configuration tool. And if you are doing more like processing, I tend to use more fabric. Uh, my question is uh, uh, similar than the previous questions. I also plan to uh, use uh, some configuration tools such as Fabric. Uh, have you ever uh, compared with the other configuration tools such as Chef? So what do you think about the advantage of the Fabric compared with those uh, utilities? Perhaps the advantage of Fabric is that uh, at least when I started using it, uh, there was Chef and there was uh, Puppet, and they were both uh, like special languages. Chef, I think it uses Ruby, and Puppet uses a custom language. And it was just easier for me to use Python because I have known it for a while. Uh, nowadays, perhaps that the fabric is much less involved. You, you just install it, and you can really use it. Uh, whereas Puppet or Chef or any other big configuration tools uh, tend to use much more setup. So we finished a little early. The next talks should be at uh, starting at uh, two two twenty.